Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Organi and Puzzle Box. In this video I've got something actually quite special for you guys. I want to show you how to use displacement maps and substance painter to create some rock formations very quickly and very easily. That you can then use in an application like uh, Unreal Engine with Nanite because they are going to be a bit high on the poly side of things or you can take them into ZBrush and use them as base meshes that you can build upon to then create new and interesting shapes with it and then UV unwrap into the texture and substance painter. The bottom line here is that with some simple techniques you can apply all of this to a cube which is quite interesting that you can just, you can just take a cube and just make it into a very nice looking mesh in, in just a few clicks and then you can just refine your process going forward. I'm going to show you how to avoid some of the common pitfalls when it comes to displacement maps and substance painting, especially when creating organic shapes such as rocks. Uh, I know organic shapes and rocks, but yeah, no, seriously, you will definitely enjoy doing this and it's, it's quite a nice workflow overall, quite a simple workflow that just cuts off a lot of time wasted on sculpting your own rocks when you can just start off with a nice base base um, uh, sort of mesh straight away. So let's let's not waste any more time. Let's begin. Bear in mind that all you need is an application where you can create a cube and have it UV unwrap, and that's about it. So I'm going to use Blender, but you can use whatever you want. Now let's begin. So in Substance Painter, uh, sorry, in Blender, as you can see, I've got a cube opened. Um, this is just a default cube. You can create this, or actually, when you start the program, you get a default cube. Some of you guys will know this already. And I'm just going to have a look at the UVs. This cube does come up with a, a UV unwrap modifier already added. Um, sorry, just the UV unwrap, not a modifier. I don't know why I say modifier. But anyway, you've got the you've got the uh, cube unwrap. It's not the best unwrap ever. It's just a simple cube unwrap. You've seen these many times before. We're just going to leave it as that. I don't want to complicate this process any further. You just want a cube really with a UV unwrap. And what we want to do is we want to add some a form of tessellation to the cube just so we can use it in Substance Paint with Displacement Maps. So over here I'm just going to add a subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to move it over to Simple just so it can retain the shape that it's got. And then I'm going to add another subdivision surface and I'm going to go times two. And I'm going to leave it at Calmel Clark just so it smooths those, uh, those areas a bit. And then with that done, I can then um, go up here into object and just do a shape smooth so you can see how the normals are going to look like. Now, at this point, the cube is now ready for us to export and start using the Substance Painter. So I'm going to go into File, Export, FBX. Make sure you've got selected objects uh, over there. I'm just going to go in my downloads and I'm going to type in Rock01 and that will be my export. Now that's done, so now I can open Substance Painter and begin the next part of the process. Now, while we're in Substance Painter, we can then bring our new asset. So, new, select, I'm just gonna select the rock, leave it at 4K, and then don't take auto on rapids. You definitely don't wanna do that. Now, once we do that, we will have our cube in the scene. So this is quite a straightforward process. At this point, you want to add a uh, texture on top of this. So I've got this lichen, uh, covered cave rock, so I'm just going to use that, drop it in, and as you can see, uh, once that's done, for some reason it takes a bit of time, uh, once the texture is added, you can see it on our cube, you can see that it will have some seams around here, which are obviously quite ugly and we don't want that, but we're not going to resolve that issue just yet. Uh, we can delete this paint layer, we don't actually need it for now. So we've got this texture over here and now we want to add some displacement. So we're going to go up here to our shader editor and then, sorry not shader editor, I think it's just shader settings isn't it? So we're just going to increase the height, uh, maybe something like that, but as you can see nothing really happens to the mesh and that's because this particular texture does not have the height um, active in its layer. So once we press the height information, you will see that it's now been deformed. So we'll go up here, increase that height a bit more, maybe somewhere around that point. And then we want to change this to edge length. I always use like edge length for this and maybe go for 128 div uh, subdivisions. And that's about it really on that process. You can now see how our rock has deformed, our texture has deformed the, the cube. So we can actually use this, as I've said, as a base in ZBrush. We can go even further with the deformation if we want to, but I'm just gonna keep it at this level. But we have these weird UVs that have now formed and 
really bad, obviously. We want to get rid of all this because this will translate into ZBrush or whatever you're going to bring it. It will show up in there as well. Not to mention, it's also created these these uh, um, you know the, the, this edge here that you can see inside the mesh. So that's not good at all. Right. So in order to get rid of all that very easily and automatically, what you would do is you would actually well first add a filter to this uh, to this texture and just add a sharpen um, just so we can bring in some detail into this rock which will look quite nice um, and now we'll copy so control copy layer and then control v to paste the layer so we've added the layer a second time but that's that's fine at this point what we want to do is we want to switch over to the height uh, channel and then say we want this to be replaced so we want this layer to replace the height information of this layer right so at this point, we then add a black mask. So right click it, add a black mask. This will make that layer to disappear. And now we can right click the black mask and add a generator. With the generator added, you want to go over here and select the UV borders. So what happens is, right now, um, a Substance Painter is telling this, comp uh, this layer to only show up on where the UV borders of our mesh are. So that's the only place. With that done, we can select the layer again and then switch it from UV projection to triplanar projection. And now when you look over here, what's happened now is we have this layer that is only showing up on the UV side of, you know, where the seams are of the mesh, but it sort of, it covered that problem that we had with the height where it, it made the edges of the, of the mesh sort of split apart and also all those issues that we had with transition, transitioning issues. So those are now gone, pretty much gone uh, very, very quickly. And this, this can work pretty much most of the time. And when it doesn't, when you're not getting the, the result that you want, you can play around with the settings of the uh, mask, sorry, of the UV border distance, for example, or you can play with the settings of the height information in parameters. So you got technical parameters of the actual layer and you can play around with the height position and height range to fix any sort of issues but generally this has already fixed your issue now at this point we've also got this layer which has got a sharpen on top of it as well it just brings more detail to that texture which i really really like um, so now looking at this um, we can go a bit further um, if we want to to fix some issues that you can find about around here right so you can see how the uh, texture has got distorted a bit um, really, to, in order to do this, you may want to, uh, to to start playing around with the settings a bit of, the, of a blur slope added to one of the layers, really. So in order to do this fix over here, what you would do now is you can take this layer and duplicate it again. So Control c Control v and we've now duplicated the layer. Now what we want to do is for the top layer, we want to disable height, so we have no height information. We're getting the height information from the bottom layer though, so you can see it over there. So on the bottom layer, what we can do is we can get rid of color, metal, roughness, and normal, and just keep the height information. Uh, and then we can right click it, add a filter, and then with that filter, we can change this to a blur. Now the blur, as you can see, has already been applied and it has sort of fixed that issue. It will never completely fix it until, uh, unless they find a new sort of way of dealing with the algorithm on that. But yeah, the, the, that problem will never really disappear uh, entirely, but it's now a lot better just because we added that blur underneath these layers. Okay, but now we've got another problem that we can resolve. This takes a bit more, this is a bit more tedious, but it's definitely worth doing if you want your mesh to look as good as possible. So, uh, let's, I'm just trying to find an example and I think I just did. Right, as you can see right here, although we added the triplanar information and then we, do, we did all of that to get rid of the edge split, we still have this clear seam over here. And if you want to get rid of that, there is a way of doing it as well. So we're going to add on top of all of this a new paint layer. And this paint layer, we're going to change the base color to pass through, the metallic to pass through, pretty much everything in here will be changed to pass through apart from the height. You want to keep the height the way it is. With that done, over here on the, um, so you can see over here on the left side, you've got the tool bar. 
So you can select the clone tool, which is number six on the keyboard. But with that selected and in the paint layer, we can press V on the keyboard, keep V pressed and just press wherever you want on the mesh and that will create this rectangular, rectangular shape which tells us we're using that information to paint over here. So as I do this, you can see that I'm pretty much adding that information over on here and the seam has now disappeared, just like magic. But you obviously gotta go around the entire uh, area where you're seeing this problem just to uh, make sure that that seam is no longer visible. So this is this can be a bit tedious, I know, but it will be worth the extra effort if you really want to hide any of the seams. The bottom line is our mesh is now pretty much um, almost completed. I, I'm using control and scroll wheel to, to change the size of this uh, clone tool. But as you can see, I have now fixed this area uh, in regards to the seam and the height information is still retained. It's very important that you don't do a pass through on the height information because if you do that, it will just mess up the triplanar information that you've just, uh, you know, tried to resolve here and not have a, this issue. So I'm not going to continue on, uh, you know, editing this mesh because it's pretty much done in the sense of what I was trying to show you guys over in this, uh, in this uh, tutorial. Now that the mesh is done, you pretty much want to ensure that you export it. So again, you know, finish off the work and all that. But if you actually want to use this mesh into your program like ZBrush and, and so on, you can actually export it as Substance Painter with Displacement. So you go to File, Export Mesh, and then you can select With Displacement and Tessellation and export it. Again, this is going to be a bit of a heavy scene because it will have uh, quite a bit of geometry based on the displacement that we've applied, but this shouldn't really be a problem if you're using it with Nanite and Unreal Engine 5, and it won't definitely be a problem if you import it into ZBrush to then edit it in there, and again, you know, you can uh, use things like Decimate and all sorts of things to um, further enhance this rock after you've uh, um, you've edited the way you want it. I know the shape of it is just a cube, but you can make it out of any shape you want. Uh, what I would advise is try to keep, a, uh, you know, have a good unwrap on this because you want the quality of the geometry to be as high as possible, and that is 100% related to your texture, to your UV unwrap that you do yeah so the more the more the UV unwrap makes sense you know it follows through it goes around nicely on your mesh the easier it will be to clean up as well uh, when you go in substance painter and you actually as I said you, you do your um, you know entire work with the clone tool and so on but yeah that's this is this is basically this is a very interesting workflow I must say um, but yeah I really really do enjoy it so I hope you guys found this useful. I know I'm, uh, you know, I'm quite happy with the with the method. Um, you can use it for so many different things. You, you just imagine for a second here, you're building up this entire, this big rock cluster. You've made it out of these shapes. You then bring them over into ZBrush, merge them together. You know, do some nice real tweaking in there, and just create some really nice and crisp geometry. And then you bring that over into something like Blender, and then UV unwrap it. Uh, again with multiple materials like Udims and stuff and then really then texture it again and make it look you know top-notch and then bring it into your game or whatever you want to use it for but again this is I mean the sky is the limit with this kind of stuff uh, if you guys know how to fix that blurriness of the of the textures how to fix the, the you know the, the banding that you can see on textures when you do the displacement uh, modifiers on it please let me know but other than that I, I hope I, I've taught you guys something you know quite important today it is very important for me especially because I build a lot of environments and this is a lifesaver especially with Unreal Engine 5 and the new Nanite feature so I'll see you guys in my next tutorial please stay tuned like comment and subscribe